Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you my favourite tips and tricks for Procreate as well as a few of the basics. Now, I am planning to do a full tutorial for my Patreons and hopefully a little mini version for my YouTubers. I am no expert, but I'm sure there's some knowledge I can share with you guys. So obviously if you've got any questions, let me know and I will try my best to answer them for you. And I'm hoping that I cover kind of the basics, but yeah, it should be fun. So let's get going. Okay, the app is not free. It, I think it's about 10 pounds to buy, but it's totally worth it. I apologise, I do have my fan on because it's so hot in here, so hopefully you can hear me. First things first, we're going to open the Procreate app. I'm going to start off by opening a new document by clicking this plus. Now there are a load of presets here already, but you can set up your own presets as well. I'm just going to open up an A4 document. This is what you begin with, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> now you can pinch your screen to zoom in and out and if you know you end up on some wonky angle to get it back nice and straight and to the normal size just do a quick pinch and zoom and it will snap back to where it originally started now you can use your finger for procreate but personally i cannot be without my apple pencil my apple pencil is my baby you might feel a little bit overwhelmed by all of the options so i'm just going to talk through some of them for you first thing i think we should talk about is layers now see this little square button here it will show you all of your layers now if you've never worked on a program like photoshop where you work with layers you might not understand what layers is Layers are exactly that, they are layers where you can put artwork on one layer, create a new layer and have artwork over the top, create another layer and so on and so forth. Some people don't like them, some people love them. I am a lover of layers. You can drag and drop them to reorder them. With our layers, you can click your little plus button and you will get more. You can also swipe your layer to duplicate it, delete it. If you click on a layer, it'll bring up an extra menu where you can rename it. And there are lots of other functions which I will go through a little bit later on. You've also got your background layer. Now this will automatically usually be white. If you click on it, you can change the color. So let's go pink, cause you know, I like pink. So now I've got my background color and my layer one, which has nothing on it at the moment. Let's get into some tools. The main tools that you're gonna use are your brush, probably your eraser. There are lots of tools along here. You've got settings, you've got adjustments, you've got the select tool, and the, I think this is like the move tool. So if I go into the brushes, and let's go with Studio Pen as a brush, I'm gonna change the color, so up here you'll see um, it's set to white. If you click on your color, you can choose, I don't know, let's go with, let's go black because hopefully you'll be able to see it. And from here, if we're on our layer one, we can start making marks. Do a little heart. It's a bit glitchy sometimes with the zooming in and out, unfortunately. <laughs> so if I wanna fill my shape, I can drag and drop our black and it will fill it. So I've got my little heart filled in. One of the really important tools that you're gonna to need to know is undo. So let's say I've drawn this swell and it's gone wrong. How do I get rid of it? You have the undo button or redo or I can erase it, which isn't very good and I'll show you why. I've got it set to a really small size. So if I drag this slider up, it'll make my eraser bigger. I can undo that because I don't want that. You can also change the opacity. So this is the opacity slider here. So these sliders work for paint brushes as well. So at the moment, my studio pen's quite small. If I make it bigger, it will do big strokes. If I change the opacity, you have slightly transparent strokes. Another way to undo, which doesn't always work for me, is to do a double finger tap. So from here, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to do white over the top. 
So I can now delete or rub out, erase parts of the black without rubbing out the white. If I had done that on this layer, it will rub out the black and the white. And that is why layers are handy because you can work on a single art element or illustrative element without affecting the other layers. In our colours, there are lots of different ways of picking colours. You've, you've got your standard colour picker, you can slide it and choose the colour you want. You can also change it by using all of the sliders. I want it a bit lighter and I want it a bit more vibrant. So some of the tools um, that are up here, you've got your settings where you can insert photos, insert text, you can crop and resize it, you can add a drawing guide. Now this is really handy. If you select your drawing guide, go to edit drawing guide, you can choose from a 2D grid, isometric, perspective, symmetry. You can change the opacity of the grid, the thickness of the line and the color. My favourite one is the 2D grid. I always put the opacity down and change the colour to, I don't know, something nicer than whatever it puts it on. You can change the grid side. It's perfect for lettering. One that's really handy is the select tool. If we choose the select tool, you've got automatic, freehand, rectangle and eclipse. Now I'm going to choose the freehand. I want to select this. You can copy and paste it and it will paste it onto a new layer. But from here, you can go to the move tool and move it around. Now, technically, technically I can go straight to the move tool and move it anyway because it's on its own layer. So let's add something else. So if I choose the move tool now, it selects both objects and moves them around. If I choose the select button and just select the heart and then move it, it just moves the heart. There's also always this handy reset button if you do anything that you do not like. Those are the main tools. So I think the next thing to talk about is probably some of the tools that you get in your side menu. I'm gonna talk about select and clipping masks. Let's say I want to add an effect to this heart. I don't know, I wanna go in with a bright purple and add some chalk. That's great, but what about all this mess? You've got multiple options. The first one I will show you applies to this. Now, I've already drawn this, so it's kind of too late to use the select tool, but what I can do is make it a clipping mask. So if I tap on the layer and select clipping mask, it will clip that effect to the layer underneath. Okay, so this is my favorite one. So tap the layer you want to use as your template and choose select, and you'll get this wavy background. From here, go to your new layer and you can start drawing. And it gives you the same effect. The difference with this is that I can create multiple layers and it will stay selected. I can change my colors. With a clipping mask, that doesn't work you have to then clip each mask to the net, like to that bottom layer. I just prefer the select tool. You can also, if we hide this, you can also draw on the layer that's selected. But then you run into the issue of, well, if I want to erase it, I erase the white as well. And that's why I like working on multiple layers. It is crazy how many options there are on the layer styles and there's just, there's, the possibilities are endless with this app. I absolutely love it. Can I just say this isn't sponsored, I just absolutely love this app and I wanna share it with you. So I am going to play around with our purple layer. You've got this N part here. So if I click on the N, what that means is normal. There are no layer effects applied. You can change the opacity of the purple layer. You can change the effect. Yeah, they all kind of look similar. Oh, oh, look, see, that one's gone green now. My, I'm sorry, my screen is just changing its brightness all the time. Yeah, the brightness is up. I think it's overheating. I'm gonna untick the select button up here, take it off selection. Okay, so let's say we're happy with our document. You know, this is my masterpiece. I wanna save it. To save the document, 
you want to go to share and from here you've got PSD files, PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs and TIFFs. So majority of the time I save it as a JPEG, especially if it's a completed illustration. If I want it to have a transparent background, I export it as a PNG. So to have a transparent background, you can untick the background color and you will now have a transparent file as long as you save it as a PNG. If you save it as a JPEG, it will not be a transparent file. So I'm gonna go through the motion. So I'm gonna choose JPEG. It's gonna ask if I wanna share it with people or save it. Or you can open it in, uh, save it to OneDrive or you just save the image, export successful. Here it is in my images. Pretty snazzy, right? So from here, you have the same option. You can share it as PSD, JPEG, etc., etc. There's a lot you can play with. It's an amazing app. There's so many different effects. You've got this amazing light pen and you've got sparkles, textures, like, you know, I want some dots on my illustration, or just good old sketching pencils. There's so many different, let's change that to black. There's so many effects you can make. Now, by using an Apple Pencil, we have the ability to change our pressure. So, I'm using one of the calligraphy brushes, it's called the brush pen, and if I just press lightly, I get a fairly even line. And if I start light and then go heavy, go light again, you can get all these amazing effects on your brush. Same with this blotchy one. Which makes it perfect for lettering. Super, super easy to do lettering. That is the basics of Procreate. I'm going to leave you with five tips. The first one is to set your gesture controls. I have my own gesture controls set up. For example, if I take a finger and hold it on the screen, I've got a color picker so I can choose whichever color I want. You can do this by going into preferences and gesture controls. Tip number two, be careful when resizing your illustrations. I'm going to draw a small heart. So we have this tiny little heart. And I need it bigger, so you know, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna resize it by pinching. Look, it's so pixelated now. And that will happen when you resize things in Procreate, unfortunately. And the same goes for going smaller. Tip number three. I wanna make a nice circle. Right, I'm gonna try and draw my best circle, hang on. That's my best circle. You draw a circle and then hold your Apple Pencil, it will automatically turn it into an ellipse. If you click Edit Shape, you can choose an ellipse or a circle. So now it is a perfect circle. The same goes for drawing a straight line. Click and hold, it will automatically make it a straight line. You want a triangle? No problem. I'm gonna show you how to do some easy animations. Okay, I am going to draw out Luna rocks. Now I've decided I want this text to be wiggly. The way this is done is by adding lots of layers and drawing over the top. So if we go to our settings, click on animation assist, you'll get this a little bar down the bottom and I'll show you what happens. So let's add a new frame. It automatically uh, changes the opacity of the one underneath. So we're just gonna write over it again. Add frame. By the way, this is a very, very simple one and I would normally take a lot more time but I just wanna show you what can be done. Okay. I've done five different Lula Rocks. Now at the moment it just looks like a mess. And click play. How easy and cool is that? To export it, we go to share as animated GIF or GIF. I don't know what you want to call it. And here you can choose your frames per second again. And basically all of, what did I have it as, 15? If we export that, 
save image, I think that should be in them. There we go. It's so easy to do. So that's how you do animations. Okay, my last tip for you is probably just making your work life a little bit easier. If you wanna use your images as a reference, if you swipe up on your iPad, you wanna hold and drag your photos and drag it to the left-hand side. Or you can do it to the right-hand side. I mean, it's up to you. And there we go, we've got our reference image. It comes in very, very handy. But you can also have other things open there as well. I mean, if you wanted to watch uh, studio vlogs. But it does obviously reduce the amount of size you've got here. Okay, that's the end of our Procreate tutorial for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to check out the full version, please feel free to pop over to Patreon and join us over there to get access to this full tutorial. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments and of course I will do my best to help you out. Hopefully I will be back very soon with more studio vlogs and tutorials for you guys. See you soon. Bye.